Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the assumptions for a 2A ANOVA. Uh, oftentimes when uh, running statistics, uh, the assumptions that underlie the statistics are overlooked. Uh, and the uh, statistics, for example, an ANOVA is uh, processed, data is analyzed using ANOVA, and the results are interpreted, but that interpretation uh, the meaning of that interpretation has to be called into questions if the assumptions were never checked. So we're going to look at the three assumptions of a 2A ANOVA. I have here a fictitious data set, uh, which I'm going to explain, and I'll explain the, the three assumptions and we'll test them. So let's presume this data comes from a mental health setting where you're looking at two independent variables. This independent variable is a six-week or a 12-week duration of treatment. And the next one is an emphasis of that treatment. You have substance use, depression, and trauma. And then an overall functioning score, where a low score uh, represents fewer symptoms and a high score represents more symptoms. So a low score would represent higher overall functioning, and a high score would represent lower overall functioning. So the three assumptions for 2A NOVA uh, the first is that there's no outliers, and the second is that you have what's called homogeneity of variance. And the third is that the data is normally distributed, the dependent variable is normally distributed across the groups. So first we're going to test uh, that third assumption along with the uh, no outliers assumption, and then we'll take a look at homogeneity of variance. The first thing you want to do is split the file so that the data will come out in a f uh, manner that will be uh, useful for what we're trying to accomplish here. And by default, uh, uh, the screen would look like this, right? So you want to organize the output by groups and move over the two independent variables and hit OK. Uh, so that was data, split file, uh, both independent variables here under groups based on and organized output by groups. Now I want to go to descriptive statistics and explore. So analyze descriptive statistics and explore. We're going to leave uh, the statistics option the same. Uh, the plots, uh, we're going to add the normality plots. This, this would normally not be checked. It would look like this. We're going to add normality, normality plots with tests. And the options will remain the same. We're going to exclude cases list-wise. Now this analysis has quite a bit of output because it's looking at every combination of the levels of the independent variables across the dependent variable. And the statistic that we're looking for to test normality is Shapiro-Wilk. And we're looking for a non-significant value, so anything above 0.05. And you can see this is divided up by every level. So you have six-week combined substance use. And you can see that's uh, normal. And we'll check outliers with the stem and leaf. And there's no outliers there. We'll have to move through a lot of data, uh, a lot of uh, output here. Uh, you have six week and then uh, depression. You can see again, non-significant, so it's normal. And no outliers. Six weeks with the emphasis being trauma. This is normal, 0.541. But case 45 and case 32 are outliers. So there's two outliers in that particular combination of independent variables. Here we have 12 week. Uh, with the emphasis being substance use. Again, uh, non-significant. 
and case 59 is an outlier, so that's our third outlier. Twelve weeks with the emphasis of depression, again non-significant, and no outliers. And then the last one, which is 12-week emphasis trauma. Again, it's normal. It's normally distributed. And in this case, case 84. That's our fourth outlier. So what we have here in this, this 2A NOVA so far is that it's met the third assumption, which is the uh, every combination of independent variables, is, is the, uh, the dependent variable is normally distributed. All right, so that's uh, that meets that assumption. On the outliers, which is the first assumption, uh, it does not meet that. There's four outliers. So then the question is, what do we do about that? And there's many different opinions regarding uh, outliers. Uh, I think the best bet is to look at those four cases because it gives you the, the case reference in the output. Look at those four cases and see if there is a legitimate reason that they can be deleted from your data. Um, data simply can't be deleted because we don't like it. There has to be a legitimate reason. So you can look at those cases and discover those participants who are trying to manipulate um, the outcome, um, something of that nature. Now that's four separate outliers in a data set of only 90 participants. So, it, you know, depending on the the, um, the nature of the population and uh, the purpose of the research, you know, d you know, whether the participants had any reason to be motivated to score high or low. Uh, for example, if they were court ordered or something of that nature, you may be able to uh, exclude those. Uh, another uh, option, if you can't exclude those, would be to continue forward with the analysis, but note that there were outliers in your limitation section, which is a subsection of the discussion section. And of course, a transformation is always an option. So now let's take a look at the uh, third. So we've met, we haven't met the first, we do have four outliers. And the dependent variable is normally distributed across uh, each combination of independent variables. So now we want to test homogeneity of variance. So the first thing that's important to remember is to go back to split file and analyze all cases. Split file off, you should see this. And now we can analyze data using uh, univariate. And we'll put in the fixed factors. And the dependent variable will be overall functioning. And all these different options here will leave the same except for options. And clicking over here, control A, we'll move all these for display the means. And we're just going to look at homogeneity tests. That's all we're looking at here because uh, this is just uh, testing the assumptions still. So we can see uh, in this case uh, we're looking at Levine's test. Uh, you can see it tests the null hypothesis that the error variance of the dependent variable is equal across groups. And we have to reject the null hypothesis because we have significance, which means the dependent the uh, the variance of the dependent variable is not equal. So the question becomes, what do we do when we have a Levine's test that is significant? So we violated the uh, second assumption, homogeneity of variance. Well, there's a few choices. Um, this, the 2A ANOVA is robust to violations of homogeneity of variance. Uh, there is a risk that the output uh, will not be accurate. 
but that limitation could be stated in the limitations section, similar to what I discussed earlier about the outliers. So for this data set, uh, we have, we saw that the dependent variable uh, was normally distributed across the uh, levels of the uh, independent variable. We saw four outliers, uh, so it violated the assumption of no outliers, and we saw that it violated the assumption of homogeneity variance. So uh, I want to thank you for watching my video on the assumptions behind 2A ANOVA. As always, if you should have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.